Welcome, this is Matthias for MamaWorld.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how to work with our extension Beat Edit for Premiere Pro to edit much more easily and accurately in Premiere Pro with music. So here I've got an audio clip already in my timeline and I want to edit in sync to the beat of this music. So I select the clip and click on load music to load it right into the beat edit extension and now a beat detection process starts automatically and now this is finished and you can see those blue lines here that visualize the beats that the beat detector has found and if we click on play you can hear some click sound on top of the music which shows you where exactly those beats are yeah so we can also make the music itself here uh, silent to hear only the clicks and make this beat click more or less loud if you want or deactivate it completely also if you like. So this gives you a nice way to hear where the beats actually are and this is in particular useful if you later start using these advanced beat selection features. But we want to discuss this later in this tutorial. For now let's see how we get our detected beats right into our sequence. So for this all you need to do is to choose if you want clip markers or sequence markers. Sequence markers will show up here at the top of the sequence. Clip markers which we want to use now have the advantage that they are part of your clip and move with the clip when you move the audio clip itself in the timeline. So we choose clip markers and click on this icon here. And now you can see we have for all those beats markers right in my timeline. Now I want to have the first cut here, for example. Let's quickly listen to this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, bam. Here yeah, this next beat, I want to start with my next clip. So I can just take it and drag it here. And now I say this should be four beats long and then the next one maybe should also be four beats long. And as you can see, it is nicely snapping to my beats here automatically since I have enabled a snapping here in my timeline, which allows me to really very quickly do my editing. Also, if I move my cursor, I can hold down the shift key and this will make the cursor itself snap to the beats to cut the clip. And now if you play this back. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, cut, two, three, four, bam. You can see it exactly cuts at those beats and it's accurately cut to the music in no time. If we look here very closely, one interesting thing is you might feel, oh, why is this cut here? Why is my marker here? And it's not here at the very beginning of this big peak, so to speak. And this is one interesting detail and this is the beats are not actually exactly at the point where you see here our visual peak in the waveform. Sometimes some sounds happen a little tiny bit before the actual beat and so on. So the take home message here is if you cut based on those markers here, you will be more accurate than if you look at the waveform, even in situations where the peaks in the waveform seem to show you where the beat is. This is the actual beat pattern and not what you can see here in the waveform. Now let me quickly continue doing here my edit. So now here in this clip uh, where here this woman is landing, I want to show you something else, namely that you can not just place the cuts at the beats, but also like the key action of your clip. For example, here's a key action I've marked already with this marker here. And this is exactly the point where she touches the ground. Now you can say we want this to happen to BAM at exactly this marker here. Okay, so what we do is we just take our clip and move it over until this marker snaps towards the marker where we want the key action to happen. And now... Now this action happens exactly in sync to the beat. So either you place a cut to the beat or you place your main action in sync with the beat and all of this can be very quickly done with beat edit. Now let's very quickly create a slideshow with beat edit. We've got these pictures here of this party. And now we simply go to beat edit, make sure our song is selected and loaded in the beat edit interface to start the beat detection. Then this time we create sequence markers and not clip markers. You can see them here in the timeline now. And now this is our folder with our in total 72 images of this party and we simply drag it on this automate to sequence icon here. And now just make sure that the placement is set to add unnumbered markers. And if you now click OK, you can see that all our images are inserted into the timeline exactly at our beat markers. 
And you can see that this is cut very accurately to the beat, but maybe it's still a little bit too monotonous if you want to have some more variation. And another issue you have is that many images have been inserted here after the song. So let's quickly take a look here at the Beat Info panel of Beat Edit, where you can see that we have just 55 beats in total, but 72 images. So we need some more beats to fit all images into the duration of the song. So we delete the old markers and go to the Beat Selection section, where we enable the option to add extra markers. I will describe Beat Selection in full detail later. For now, you just need to know that it adds markers at other points in time that are not really beats, but still very prominent peaks in the waveform, so they form the rhythm of the music. So I play with the sliders until the beats and extra markers, which are these orange lines here, are exactly as many as our images. So we've got 72 beats now and 72 images. We create new markers for those, delete the old clips, go back to the beginning of the timeline and run automate to sequence again. Now the images fit exactly to the duration of our song. Just the last one is a bit longer and this is simply because it is placed at the very last beat. So there's no next one anymore where it would be clipped. Now the beginning of the edit is still slow and relaxed because we didn't select any extra beats in this section. But now the extra beats are coming and the edit is faster and more energetic. So you can see you have a lot of control to create exactly the slideshow you want. One last tip for creating still image slideshows. If your still images have not the same size as your sequence, you can select them all and go to Clip, Video Options and enable Scale to Frame Size. Because then wherever you insert those images, they will automatically be scaled to fit the size of your sequence. So now let's take a look at an example with some video clips instead of still images. Um, I've got my music for this uh, sample project here already loaded into Beat Edit. And in general, if we edit video, we usually don't want to cut it as fast as still images. Uh, so let me in this example, for example, select one beat every four beats and then just create sequence markers for every four speed in our timeline. Now with video footage also what you usually want to do is make sure that you've set the in points of your clips appropriately. So by default of course automatic sequence starts always at the very beginning of each clip but if you want to say well for this clip here I don't want to start at the very beginning but I want to be start here make sure to set the in point and then automatic sequence will respect this. Setting the out point is not really so important because the duration is always determined by the distance to the next marker and not really by this out point here. Also often you want the clips to appear in a particular order yeah and then you can just use the selection order. So let's say we went want first this one here to appear then the elephant should come and then this one and then here all the remaining ones and then drag them on the automated sequence. And one other important detail, I have my current time indicator here at the very beginning of this uh, sequence because automated sequence always starts at the current time indicator. Now we make sure that we have chosen here selection order because we want them to be inserted in the order that I've selected them. And we again always want to do the placement at unnumbered markers. And now we've very quickly created this rough cut. So now let's take a detailed look at these beat selection features here. In this first line you can select a subset of these blue lines here of our beats and you better read it from left to right. So you can either in the entire song or in the highlighted region. Highlighted region would mean I highlight here something. You can select exactly one beat every, let's say, four beats, for example. Select, and now in this region that I highlighted, you can see just one beat every four beats is selected. And if I say not in the highlighted region, but in the entire song, then this happens for the entire song. Now, every four beat is selected always such that the one closest to the current time is selected. This means if I click here in the middle, to get my play at here and click on select, it will change the selection such that this beat here is included. You can even do this while playing. So if you want to select like always one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, click, two, three, four. Now I clicked exactly when the one was playing and this made sure that I have selected exactly the one in my one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four pattern. 
Okay, this is the selection you can ev also select randomly every one to four beats, for example, which means now the distance between two selected beats is randomly something between one and four always. And you can also add to your selection or remove from your selection. You can also subdivide beats. This is new in version two. If I set this to two, it's like going twice as fast. Yeah, original beats. Subdivision with two, and you can go even more crazy here. And now, while this random selection here allows you to randomly select a subset of the actual beats, now this add extra markers thing here allows you to select peaks that are in between the actual beats, and those are not purely random points, but actually still peaks that are very relevant for the rhythm of the music. And how relevant they should be, you decide with this musical chaotic slider. So the more musical, the more important the peaks are, the more prominent that you chose. And these are chaotic. And here you just say how many of them you want to have. And the best thing is to just play this through and hear what is happening. Let me just maybe first select one beat every one, four beats. And now add some randomness. You can see that this feels pretty musical, fits very well to the rhythm of the music. Yeah, And now if you say, I want more chaos, these are still nice peaks, but they are not replicating the rhythmical patterns so accurately. Yeah. Um, one thing that you often notice is if you set this to very musical, that it's not very evenly distributed in your song. So here, for example, at the very beginning, there are very few extra peaks, and here there are some more. And if you play this through, you can see that this first part has not so much energy, so to speak. It's not so intense. And now here, where the many peaks are, the music gets more intense. I can see the rhythm changes, more peaks, more intense rhythm and hence more peaks. And so if you want your random peaks to be more evenly distributed, it might help to set this to more chaotical because then it does not favor the intense peaks in the intense parts of your music so much. Another option you have is to filter. If you say, I never want to have be those peaks very, very close together, you have this minimum distance filter here, which says now, for example, make sure that your peaks have never a distance closer than 0.18 seconds in this case, or in other words, each slide of your slideshow will at least be visible this amount of time. If you do a chaotic selection, finally this die here allows to change your randomness. It's a random seat and if I click here you can see each time I click on it I get a new number and I get a new selection here. And you can go back to any earlier selection at any time uh, if you want. Uh, if you set your selection to purely musical, you will see that this die here has no impact at all because then just the intensity of the peaks and not any randomness uh, plays a role in the selection of them. So finally, let's take a look at the advanced marker manipulation features of BeatEdit. So the first thing I want to show you here is that creating and deleting markers, if you hover over it, the help tip tells it to you, by shift clicking it, you can limit this to the work area. So the first important un thing to understand here is that this is not your work area. You have to activate your work area here in the menu. And then you get this bar here and this is your work area. And if you have this enabled, you can shift click on this create marker icon. And I can see it only created markers inside our work area and not for the entire song. And in the same way, we can also say, let's say you don't want to delete all those markers, but only the markers in this region here. Then you can shift click on delete markers and it will only delete the markers that are within our work area. You can also move markers. And this is very helpful when you want things to happen like not exactly at the beat, but slightly before the beat. Let's say these few markers, we want to move a little bit over. So I move the current time indicator here and if I now shift click to only make this happen for the work area and click move markers, you can see that the markers in the work area moved over such that this one is now snapped to our current time. And this works such that always the marker that is closest to the current time will jump to the current time. So if I go here, for example, now I'm closest to this marker. So all those markers will be moving here to the left until this marker snaps to the current time 
if I click here or shift click the move markers again. And again, by shift clicking, this will only happen in the work area. And if I just click without shift, you can see all the markers are moving that way. Okay, so now we are at the end of our overview of BeatEdit for Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed it and have fun editing with BeatEdit.